for the distribution development plan done by the Prabhu Panela Tech Corporation, Prabhu Panela Tech Corporation. So, um, a little bit of introduction about the background of the company. Um, uh, the company is located in Northwestern Pakistan. It has a uh, franchise area of five municipalities as it came to Paranaise. Um, the total franchise area is 349 square kilometers with a city kilometer of 623.9 kilometers. Uh, it was reported back in 2015 that their total sold energy was 300,000 megawatt hours. Um, it's, it's according to the DPT they submitted to the Department of Energy. Um, about the study, significance of the field of practice. Uh, the forecast will be, there will be the goal of the study is to provide a 10 year forecast mm -hmm. for the distribution development plan. And this 10 year forecast will be used for the power supply procurement planning, maintenance for planning of maintenance and expansion of the and for the future power supply agreements. Uh, the the PS uh, the ten year demand forecast that is included in the DGP is also included in the power supply procurement plan. And the power supply procurement plan is submitted to the UNERC for further examination of the company needs to evaluate its power supply agreements if it does need to expand so that it will not be reliant on the electricity market. Objectives of the field of practice. Uh, the objective of the field of practice is to forecast the energy demand for the different customers. Um, there are three methods. The customer volume growth method, time series forecasting, and demand growth method. So the fourth um, objective of the study is to test the results of the method and to test the data if it is valid according to the standards of the ERC. It is undertaken during the field of practice. Um, <coughs> during the field of practice, the activities undertaken were to, con were to implement the consumer volume growth method, time series forecasting, and demand growth method on the historical data that is um, collected by the company. So we have five customer classes. Uh, the customer classes are classified according to the type of customer and the amount of power that the customer will need. So the companies divided their customer classes into five. First is the residential. Next is the X or the small commercial customers. Y, the medium commercial commercial customers. Z class, the back customers, uh, industrial ones, and the street lights class. There is a special Customer class for the street lights because of the computation we do for the street, light, the street lights class. <coughs> so it is paid by the different municipalities and the party different customer class. Um, um, the flow chart is right here. So this is the flowchart for the customer, customer demand growth method. Uh, this method uses historical customer volume and energy demand data. Um, this is used to forecast the energy demand for the residential and next customers. So um, this, this one is the customer volume data and this is the energy and the demand data. So the first step of the method is to compute for the energy consumption per customer. <coughs> this energy consumption customer will be, this step will be using the data from the customer volume and the energy demand. Um, the next step will be to get the average volume, average volume growth. Um, <coughs> the next will be to get the average volume growth. Um, the average volume growth will be computed using only the customer volume. It is mainly, um, Averaging the the 
is averaging the growth. Um, this will be done per month. There will be 12 values for this for each month uh, for January to December. And the next one, this is the percent volume growth. Um, basically, the average volume growth will be um, converted into percentages. It will be divided by the uh, the latest it will be divided by the latest reference here. So, um, for example, if you have the average volume growth of uh, 20 customers for the month of January, it will be divided by the total number of customers for the reference year. Then, after getting the average percent average volume growth, um, the customer volume forecast will be obtained. Um, the customer volume forecast is basically um, the customer volume for the from the prior year multiplied by the um, percent volume growth of percent volume growth. So, for example, we have uh, uh, 1,000 customers for January, and the percent volume growth is 5 percent. So, for the next year, the number of customers will be 5% more than the previous year. And that will be done per year with the percent volume growth remaining constant through the forecast. Then, the customer volume forecast will yield a, will yield a customer volume for data that will be multiplied to the average energy consumption per customer, therefore giving the final forecast. The next method is the time series forecasting. This is a more established method. Um, the time series forecasting only needs one time series data. Um, it will be the historical energy demand for the street, street, street lights customer because this method is only used for the street, light, street lights customer. Yes. Um, the first step is to get the for period centered moving average of the for, for period centered moving average of the time series data and then get the um, historical historical data to for PCMA ratio. So this is basically divide, dividing the historical data with the for PCMA for with the yield of the for PCMA therefore yielding the ratio. Then this ratio will be will be used to get the seasonal index. So the computation of this will be um getting the average of all the months. For example, um we have the four piece for we have the historical historical data to four piece ratio of the month of January for every for every January period the data. Then it will be average and multiplied by a smoothing factor. The smoothing factor is um, determined by using a solver. Um, basically, we use the solver from the um, spreadsheet application to minimize the map. And the next step would be getting the seasonally adjusted time series. To get the seasonally adjusted time series, we multiply the seasonal index to the historical data. After multiplying it, we get the seasonally adjusted time series. Um, the seasonally adjusted time series will be smoothed and the seasonality is removed, removed from the series, uh, giving it a more linear trend. Then the next is to get the slope and intercept of the time series. The slope and intercept will be used to do a linear forecast of the linear forecast for the historical energy. So after getting the sloping intercept, we'll have a we'll have a, an equation for the trend of the time series data. Then the the output of the slope and intercept, uh, the linear trend will be multiplied to and therefore giving the season adjusted forecast. Um, 
the next method is the energy group method. Uh, the, the data used is also the historical energy demand. It does not use a customer volume data. Um, we uh, first to be computed for is the percent growth. The percent growth is computed by some subtracting year one from year two, then dividing the dividing the output by year two. So it is computed for every year. Then after that it will be average. Then the average will be the smooth percent energy growth. Um, this percent growth will be used for the first energy forecast. Uh, the energy forecast will be the will be computed by using the growth multiplied by the by the total of the of the forecast of the year that is being forecasted. Then the forecast will be total yielding the annual energy demand. Um, this annual energy demand is the total per year of the first energy forecast. Then after that, uh, the energy demand, which is um, in a time series of in the monthly time series, will be divided by the annual energy demand to the monthly demand percentage, which then will be used to compute for a. Uh, for the final forecast value, um, the yielded percentage will be multiplied like will, will be multiplied to the prior year to, year to yield the forecast for the current year. So, um, for example, uh, we have year 2018. We have a monthly demand forecast of monthly demand percentage of five for January 2018 that there will be a 5% increase for the this amount uh, for the year 2019. So, in the in all the method, in the first method and the second method, the there will be cons there will be a percentage that will increase for every month. So when they are forecasting forecasting they are looking for the uh, they are looking at the monthly of the, they're looking at the same months for the forecast. Um, technical knowledge and experience. Um, these are graphs of the forecast under So, this one is for the residential and the, this one is for the exposed ones. So, um, for the residential, uh, the future, um, this, for the first year, it ranges from 13,000 megawatt hour to 17,000, depending on the month. So um, this is for the ex customers. Um, the next slide will feature the forecast for the street lights. And this next one is for the Y customers. Uh, the last one is for the Z customers. The Z customers has a cons constant growth rate or assume as constant growth rate of 0.3%. So um, there is virtually no, in, almost no increase when looking at the graph. Um, this is assumed because uh, for bulk customers to increase their demand, um, they need to install another plant or they need to install another extension. And um, commonly this is applied, this is, the company is alerted before doing this. So, um, um, uh, for the bulk customers, um, the company does not assume a higher growth rate compared to the residential and the uh, uh, ex customers. Um, this is the forecast validity validity test results for the for for the forecast. Um, the ice map is 1.9 percent that is shielded by the time series forecasting um, there's there's a very long method that but there is a there is an explanation for this later on um, the adjusted r squared um every uh every every forecasting method has a valid result except for the street lights which is 
which has a low R squared. Um, the threshold that is set by the IRC for the R squared is 0.8. Um, if, it's, if it is less than 0.8, the um, company will need to explain why it has a forecast of less than 0.8. And for the map, 5% eh, is the maximum maximum value. So if it's more than 5%, then the number is not the same the years in the year. Um, then it is the data validity test as well. So the IRS also requires the company to test their data if it is significant. So for the T statistic, the required value is 2. Um, greater than greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to negative 2. Um, it's evident here that no forecasting method has reached the threshold. And for the p-value, the required is 0.1. And uh, the, all the test results came out as pain. So um, for the data validity test results, um, the, all the data is needed to be examined. Um, for the next problems and content. So, um, bias method being introduced due to the use of a training set that is part of the data set. Um, this is one of the flaws of their method. Uh, as you can see in the, the forecast results, there is a very, very low minimum, a uh, mean absolute percent error. This is this might be due to the bias they have introduced during the forecasting because their training set, um, the time series data for the customer volume and the energy demand, um, we use it as part of the test set. Um, the test set should be independent from the training set because it will introduce a bias. So, bias method being introduced, and um, there is no proper test set to validate the results. There is no proper test set because of the use of the training set as test set. So, also, um, there is a moving average step in the energy growth method that use data four years apart from the forecast period. So if I'm forecasting for 2019, um, the data they used was from, um, the data they used from, was from 2013 to 2015. So um, there is a quite a disconnect because um, in forecasting, the more recent the data is, um, it is observed to be more relevant to the forecast. Um, this is why uh, um, a quite a number of forecast uses, uses weighted moving average giving weight to the more prior to the more recent data than the older ones. And um, problems encountered for the data validity test. All the focus methods fail the data validity test. Uh, this is um, the method used to compute for the tip statistic and the p-value compares the forecast output and the test set. And this might be an incorrect approach to testing the data value. So in the method they use to test the data, um, they use a p-test to compare the, to get the t, t statistic and the p-value for the, the for the data. So um, in the process, they use the forecast output and the um, historic, yeah, historical energy demand. So, um, this this is not a this might not be a good method because we use a forecast output that came from the historical energy demand, and you are comparing the the two values. So, um, the t statistic is used to compare. Uh, is to is used to check for the for the rejection of the null hypothesis, which means um, is there a significant difference between the between your um the between the data you're testing and the your um test uh, that is that is to compare the means of the basis and the experiment data. So this is probably what might have happened in the data validity test. So that's why even if their data is um, correctly gathered and it is actually what the company has, um, have, has done for many of you, for the... So um, recommendations. Um, the use of a proper test set 
which should be independent from the training set because um, if you are not using a proper test set, then the results of the forecast test will be biased and it will be unreliable. Um, for the forecasting, the use, of, the use and introduction of weighted moving average may increase forecast accuracy. This is for the um, prior method that uses older data rather than the, uh, rather than the more recent ones. And um, for the handles of other tools that, that will uh, prevent um, much data processing. So um, if you use tools such as R, it will be more straightforward and it can, yield more it can do more sophisticated forecasting techniques. For the data validators, um, the method of the testing must be examined as it fails the data is collected through the customers in the real application. So um, it's recommended that they should review how they test their data. Because even if their forecast is, um, if their forecast has a um, good range and is quite accurate, if their data, data test fails, it will be for nothing. Um, and uh, so testing of the historical data without the use of a forecast output may be a better approach than the current method because the current method compares the forecast output to the uh, historical data, which is quite not what should be done. Um, thank you, sir, thank you for this. Uh,